weeks ago, David Hay, the Celtic manager, wrote to the Scottish League asking that Bob Valentine never referee a Celtic game again. Well, what was Bob doing this afternoon? He was at Brockville Park, Falkirk, to referee Falkirk against, guess who? Celtic. Well, who would be a referee anyway? The criticised, got to say, vilified uh, parentage very frequently cast into doubt. All for 36 quid. Would you do that? Listen to that noise out there. I suppose referees must realise they cannot be immune from criticism. Although, to be fair to Bob today, it must be difficult to cast out of his mind that specific criticism which came from Celtic. It adds an interesting dimension to a game which has attracted an all-ticket crowd. And a crowd that's creating quite a din here. First time I've been at Brockville in uh, maybe a year, actually, and it's a delight to come to a grand. It's very uh, famous and associated with the television football history. One of the early games to be televised was here at Brockville Park. And indeed, I'm looking right down the park, right behind the goal, the Falker goal, defending at this corner kick. Unusual position, but interesting. And there is Brian McClare starting off with the intention of uh, Celtic attacking for most of this game. Headed forward there by Tony Shepherd. Clear, not equal to that ball in the air. What a nice turn there by Modern McLeod. McClare. That was a good tackle, yes. Referee rightly waving play on as Brian Purdy comes away with it. Testing the Celtic defense with that long ball. And Aiken slipped up that time. There's a very good position here. Evan. Oh, he was so cumbersome in the way he turned. Superb move by Falkett really catching the Celtic defence out an uncharacteristic uh, stumble by Roy Aiken giving them the opportunity in the big figure of Alan Irvin who's been playing splendidly for a fork at this season just uh, a little too heavy in the way he tried to turn Celtic obviously impressed by White playing in the middle of defence look at that uh, shot away in the corner there by the way that shows you the kind of crowd that coming in late It's a free kick. Well, that's an interesting thing. Away in the corner, the crowd seemed to have brushed down the terracing. They seem to have either late comers or come down from the terracing. We've got this astonishing spectacle. I don't think the referee's aware of what's happening. Meanwhile, the game goes on. Rob Stewart. Sorry, that's Alan Irvin. That's Stewart. And that's a corner. Now the referee might appreciate what's going on in the touch line. Look at it, like the platform at Queen Street Station in the rush yard. This will be the shot and a brilliantly saved by Bonner. That was difficult. Right through a forest of legs. Johnston and Falkirk fighting very hard as Peter Heatherston goes down tries to get the return but there is Roy Aiken that's the shot coming up now watch it now look at the goalkeeper watch a goalkeeper right through superb instinctive save using his body well Tommy Burns Aiken. McClare. He's running by McClare, but he's looked after particularly well. Of course, when you're a prolific goal scorer, a very good uh, player coming from uh, deep in midfield, then you're an identifiable target. And an attempted header by White coming forward now for McStay. The 
little nutmeg. There's a great move by McStay. Oh, superb stuff. Even when he's been going through his mediocre period, you just feel that this instinctive genius of his will always bust to the surface like that. He made it, set it up, and almost finished it. Well, the struggle there between Irvin and White. I think White getting the edge at the moment. That turn there by Rev Stewart, showing up prominently for Falkirk. There was a slip again. That's the reverse pass, but far too strong. Now, McStay. A little bit of room for him there. He'll touch it on, he does. Leclerc. An attempt at the 1-2 and the reverse pass there to Paul McStay, not quite coming off. McLeod. He's had a quiet game. Just about halfway through this first half. I think the full complement of the crowd is now in. Some of them almost 20 minutes late getting in. Or getting a place in the terracing. Johnston, McInally, likes to go to defence, and he does that very well. I thought he would let fly. Held on to that far too long. He did have a view of goal. Shepard. Nice reversal. McInally. It's a wrestling match. And the referee's given a penalty. It's a penalty to Celtic for that challenge. It was certainly a wrestling match. And with, as I said, we are now dead on the halfway mark of this first half. A penalty as a result of this challenge here. Now watch Jim Dempsey going across with McInerney. And there was pulling and jostling. And down the both players went. And that is a penalty. Brian McClear will take this. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh. Let, let me tell you, let me emphasize, I'm watching this from behind the goal for a change. It's quite a unique position. And from that angle, it looked ridiculously easy, but dreadfulness. Nice touch there. Heatherston, Evan, running at Aiken, who covers that very well and wants it again. Roy Aiken holding the Celtic defense together. No question about that. He's got a young man beside him. And Roy is the perfect example for him. Touch to Irvin again. That must be a shot brilliantly saved from Jim Hughes. Warner already has performed a little minor miracle for Celtic earlier on with his legs. And this time, a bullet of a shot. And this is all about good positioning. The angle made awkward by exactly where Bonner was. And uh, McClare and Morris Johnson, the twin threats, are being picked off very easily by this defence. And Irvin, a bit slow that time. There's McClare. Billy McStay goes on the outside, but Paul McStay picks it up. Now, this is a better position for Celtic. Stay. Johnston. Up it comes to Burns. There was a dummy and nobody was behind him. Well switched there by Shepard. Willie McStay. Towards McAnally. There's McAnally and Burns. That's around his man very well indeed. And Celtic are beginning to push the likes of uh, Shepard. McStay and Mortimer McLeod forward for these balls from the goal line. Getting more players into the penalty area, but Falkirk are coping. Yes, it's nice to see a little ground, well-filled, hatched to atmosphere. Gives the players uh, an extra appetite for competition. Burns creating a lot from this deep position. Well, next day. Read it well. Well, picking up the ball he did. The pass not so clever.
Shepard. All late. Referee base play on. Out of a cloud. That's hard for Tommy Burns. Does very well to keep it in. Burns. Now McInerney. Out of a cloud. Good turning by Mc by Will Johnson rather. With Johnson to Burns. There's the header and it just passed. Brian McClare. Very interesting to see that angle. Just clipped with the head and McClare could do nothing other than put his head in the way, but he had no other time for placement and the elevation just too much. And there goes the halftime whistle. No scoring. I suspect that Celtic are suffering a hangover from that uh, extraordinary game they had against Motherwell on Tuesday evening. And when it went to extra time, then penalties. Not. And even a team of Celtic's caliber, I think that drains them emotionally as well as physically. And I think the way, even the way that uh, McClare took the penalty kick was a kind of symptom of it. Slack and rather flabby effort at it. And going over means that Falkirk, having played very starkly in that first half, stand a very good chance, if we take that as a barometer of things developing, a very good chance of getting a result in the second half. And surely a first half that has given this team a lot of confidence. Certainly not overawed by Celtic and the huge support. They've had uh, one or two efforts that have brought out fine saves and Bonner, the goalkeeper. Celtic have up their sleeves Peter Grant and Mark Smith. Mark Smith, who was an amateur with Queen's Park. Could be a good day for him. And that's back to Watson. This cute passage, just like that one you've just seen. Now, let's stay. Now he looks menacing. That's a chip, and there's nobody there for Celtic. Mother McLeod. And Celtic have picked up the momentum. One of the Celtic. No Johnson. Shepard. Walker defence coming out, Shepard with a brilliant shot and superbly saved with his marvellously loyal servant to the goalkeeper, George Watson. Now, counter attack by Falker. It's square though, forcing Cormac back. There's a neat little chip in, and that should be tucked away by Paul McStay. Runs to McStay, better game now. That Tony Shepard shot, and indeed his, his whole move, the vision of it, and that brilliant slave. I think it's worth looking at again that, when you really turn this before the defence, and then he looked up and he let fly, and that is as good a save, and shot for that matter, as you'll see in a long time. Well, he's been cool in this game. Probably have reservations about that penalty awarded. Fighting hard, I told you. They had this top tie spirit about them, Falkett. And it goes very neatly. Now, oh, there's a bit of room to manoeuvre. It's day. Shepard. Stay inside, Willie McStay on the outside. Shepard having a very good second half. There's McStay! Almost took the bar away. The cloud. I was seeing something like Celtic. On it goes. McClare tries to touch it back. Shepard, total miscue. And still the Falk at Goldmouth remains intact. Crossed there by Jim Hughes. Good counter-attack this by Falkett. Maybe that's a bit too hard, a lovely tuck so. They're waiting in the penalty area. Too strong. 
forces Rabstrud away to the line. And that pass for 90 seconds was, I think, the best in the entire match so far. Now, what I like about McStay is that even in a tight area, he does get enough space, and that's all about his skill and class, to let fly with that ferocity. And I think he was very unfortunate he came off the bar. That's Nico. Just got the slight touch. Already clustered in that midfield. No Johnson. And Brian Martins had a quite excellent game for Falkirk. Number two. Good in the air. Firm in the tackle. Shepard sensing he can do something and yet again he opens up this must be another shot oh brilliantly saved from White what a transformation in this Celtic team that indecisive quality about them has disappeared and they really are letting fly the big teenage defender look superb Example of goalkeeping too, very reliable pair of hands. Stay trying to get behind it. It's all Celtic now. White. It's a bit untidy, Buns. There's a shot, a more a kind of stabbed chip by Tommy Burns. Really didn't have much time to make up his mind. second half latish I think uh, one or two of these Falker players out there are showing visible signs of tiring and turning very quickly as Tommy Burns picks up Grant first by Grant that's beautifully to the side by Burns there's Mo Johnson with a great chance and brilliantly saved by the goalkeeper again Using his legs. Not a bad last barrier here at Falkirk with that goalkeeper Watson. Going to one side, shoving his legs out the other. That's excellent, sound technical goalkeeping. Youngster Mark Smith keeps it in. Nice ball to that far post, there's Will Johnston. Whipped away there by Martin. And the referee blows, it was hands, I think, this. Free kick to Celtic. Nine minutes left. Countdown to what might yet be a very surprising result. rightly being as he was in the first half very fussy about where they take these free kicks from and now it's Roy Aiken Ooh, that's touched away there by Brian Purdy good ball though that will be another corner kick Celtic support roaring them on now that Roy Aiken might have gone forward for this himself but he remains on the halfway line all the others are in for this out of a crowd with it and it's in Lord Johnston one nothing with eight minutes of the game remaining well the little man who can get in there quickly and Stab in the most unusual goals. He's a great six yard box player, proving again just how deadly he can be in the pocket defense. Had suddenly evaporated, they weren't there. And Johnston punished them. One nothing for 
Celtic. Thoroughly deserved on the amount of pressure they've had in the second half. That's next day. There's the head of McAnally. Just a bit too much, and I think it got it more with the top of the head than flushing the forehead. Up he went, and yep, just as he turned, it was all off the top of the head. Johnson goes out to it again, and I think maybe tiredness was a contributory factor in that goal. The defenders seem to be looking at each other, very static. And Johnson was in like a flash. Burns, break by Falkett, but Celtic now overpowering them. there by Smith, Johnston, Roy Aiken, Shepard, McAnally, Shepard a good run, and it's just scraping the crossbar up to me. Nice move by the boy, he's had, I think, um, perhaps the best performance in the second half by Celtic player. Paul could take a lot of credit from this game, even though they don't get a single point. Not just uh, their attitude, of course, their organisation. The occasional counter-attack that produced excellent saves from the Celtic goalkeeper. They've made a game of it. They've been very committed. It's been very much, as I said repeatedly, almost, it's like a cup tie. A lot of the credit, therefore, goes to them for making it exactly that. We kick to Celtic. Shepard can't keep it in. Find the whistle at any second. And there it goes. Whatever the style of the performance, Celtic effectively get two points, inspired by the captain Roy Aiken when things were getting a little rough for them in the first half in particular. A lot of good performances in the second half by Celtic. And quite clearly deserved winners, even though there was only that...